Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cloud9 Blessings. This is Amber, and I hope that you are all having a very beautiful and blessed day. Thank you all so much for joining me here on the channel. If you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe, as well as hit the notification bell so that you are constantly notified when new content is added to this channel weekly. The rapture dream that I will be sharing with you today was emailed in by our dear sister in Christ, Jean, where she shares with us some of the things that she saw that took place right after the rapture. She gives a very vivid and detailed experience in her email. In her email, it says, Hello, Amber. I sent this email to my family and friends a few nights after this dream. I don't dream much, and when I do, I seldom remember them. But the one thing I had the other night literally woke me up. In fact, toward the end of the dream, I became aware that I was actually dreaming while I was still dreaming. It was that real. I was so happy that it was just a dream and not reality. I started thanking God that it was just a dream and I was thanking him and praising him all at the same time. It only lasts a few minutes, but it was very, very powerful. I dreamed I was suddenly in the aftermath of the rapture. I believe that I was being given a vision of what it will be like to miss it. I was feeling what everyone else was feeling, and that was devastation and heartbreak. My dream started off where I was able to see hundreds of people that were running down streets. I saw people that were screaming and crying out things like, oh no, I've missed the rapture. I then saw others who had no idea what was happening and were running around screaming and crying and looking for their loved ones who had vanished right in front of them. They were confused and terrified, not knowing what had just occurred. I then saw in the dream that I was floating above and looking down at what was happening and I felt the sadness, the despair, fear, shock, and hopelessness that everyone else was feeling. Then all of a sudden, I saw hundreds of people running around in cemeteries, family members who were running up to their deceased loved ones' graves to see if they were gone. Some of the graves were opened and some were not. Those that knew their loved ones had risen in the rapture still seemed just as devastated as those who had loved ones had not because it confirmed that they had missed the rapture and they knew what was coming next. I remember that it then got dark outside. I couldn't tell if it was early morning or late at night, but I could see clearly. It only lasted a few minutes, and as I was watching and hearing it go on, I realized I was in a dream. I remember saying out loud, Thank you, God, this is a dream, and I am not left behind. Thank you for loving me and reminding me of what is coming. And as I woke up, I was praising Him and praying that everyone would be ready for His soon coming. I just wanted to share it with as many people as well as my family and friends who I love so much. The King is coming. Your sister in Christ, Jean. Thank you so much, Jean, for sharing this very vivid and detailed dream about the rapture. It is very urgent that people see of many of the things that will take place very soon. God bless you.
what advantage then hath the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous, who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid. For then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner, and not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God, they are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable, there is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher, with their tongues they have used deceit, the poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness, their feet are swift to shed blood, destruction and misery are in their ways and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. There is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay. But by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law.